Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Ghoravani Precharine Nirvasesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Desatkarine <coughs> Excuse me. Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're recounting the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And today we're talking about the Ratyatra. <laughs> So, when the chariot, at, at one particular point, the chariot of Lord Jagannath couldn't be moved, it, be, it, it just stopped, it wouldn't move. And the reason why Lord Jagannath didn't want the chariot to move was because Lord Jagannath wanted to watch the dancing of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And also the other chariot of Lord Balaram and another chariot of Subhadra, they also were happy to see Lord Chaitanya dance. <laughs> And the devotees attending Rathiatra, they could see how Lord Balaram and Subhadra Maharani were smiling at Lord Chaitanya's dancing. Lord Chaitanya would dance and he would jump very high into the air. And he would display eight different kinds of symptoms of ecstasy in his body. And all of the symptoms were visible at the same time. Some of the symptoms were his, his whole skin became goose pimples. And the hair of the body stood on end. And his body was it was like it was like a it was like a silk cotton tree. And it was all covered with thorns. Uh, 
and his teeth would chatter. People thought that his teeth may all fall out. His whole body was covered with perspiration. And at the same time, blood was oozing. And he would make sounds. Lord Chaitanya would say sounds like ja ja ga ga ja ja ga ga his voice would be choked up with ecstasy. And tears were coming out of his eyes just like water was coming out of a syringe. All the people near him, they were all covered, with, they were all soaked by the tears from his eyes. And everyone, everyone could see the color of his body, the, the, the color of his body changed from white to pink. And sometimes, sometimes he would appear stunned, and sometimes he rolled on the ground. And sometimes his hands and legs would become as hard as like dry wood and they did not move. Some, when he would fall on the ground, sometimes his breathing would stop. When the devotees saw that, they were very afraid. And the, the water, which, water was flowing from his eyes and sometimes was coming through his nostrils. And foam would fall from his mouth. When the foam fell from the mouth of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the one devotee, he came and he got, he picked up that foam and he ate it. That devotee was very expert in, in, he was very fortunate and very expert in taking advantage of this situation. And Lord Chaitanya was, after he'd been dancing for some time, then Lord Chaitanya began to think about the mood of ecstatic love. So Lord Chaitanya stopped dancing and he asked Swarup Damodar to sing. So, Swarup Damodar, he, he could understand the mind of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Swarup Damodar, 
So he began to sing a special song which would increase Lord Chaitanya's ecstasy. So he sang a song about Radharani meeting Krishna at Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna had come to Kurukshetra along with Balarama and Subhadra Maharani, his brother and sister. They'd all come there at the time of the solar eclipse. So this he sang the song he was singing was the song of separation from Krishna. Because when Radharani met Krishna at Kurukshetra, she remembered about Krishna's association in Vrindavan. So she thought, now I have again got the Lord of my life. Without him, I was burning in the fire of Cupid. And I was I was withering away, I was drying up. But now I have my life again. So, when Lord Chaitanya had this song, then Lord Chaitanya was, he began to dance in ecstasy. So the chariot of Lord Jagannath began to move very slowly because Lord Chaitanya was dancing in front. So when they were dancing and singing, all the devotees in front of Lord Jagannath, they kept their eyes on Lord Jagannath. So Lord Chaitanya went to the back of the procession and he, he brought the Sankirtan devotees with him. They all went to the back of the procession. So Lord Chaitanya's eyes and mind were fully absorbed in Lord Jagannath. So he began to play the drama of the song. So sometimes Lord Chaitanya would fall behind in the procession. So when Lord Chaitanya would fall behind, 
Then Lord Jagannath would stop, he wouldn't go forward. And when Lord Chaitanya came forward, then Lord Jagannath would begin to roll again. So there was like a competition between Lord Chaitanya and Lord Jagannath. With both Lord Chaitanya and Lord Jagannath wanted to lead. So who should lead? So he made Lord Lord Chaitanya made Lord Jagannath wait. He had to wait. Just like after Krishna left the gopis and went off to Dwarka, then after some time Krishna went to Kurukshetra and at that time he met all the people from Vrindavan again. So Lord Chaitanya, he is in the mood of Radharani. And Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but he's in the mood of Radharani. Because he wants, as Radharani, he wants to understand Krishna. And Lord Jagannath is Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya is Radharani. So when Lord Chaitanya is leading Lord Jagannath, going, they're going to the Gundicha temple, then it's like Radharani leading Krishna to Vrindavan. Right, the big temple of Lord Jagannath, that is like Dwarka. That's where Krishna enjoys all of his opulence. But Lord Jagannath is being led by Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is taking him to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, all the village people, they're very simple people, but they have great love for Krishna. Jagannath Puri is the place of opulence. It's the place where there's Aishwarya Leela. And Vrindavan is the place of Madhurya Leela, the place of sweetness. So when Lord Chaitanya is at the back of the Rathiantra, when he's coming behind at the back, this indicates that Lord Jagannath, who is Krishna, 
was forgetting about the people of Vrindavan. No, no. Krishna neglected the inhabitants of Vrindavan. But he could not forget them. So during the Rathiatra, he was coming back to Vrindavan. And Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of Radharani. And he's he's try he's examining the mood of Lord Jagannath who is Krishna. He wants to see if Krishna is still remembering the people of Vrindavan. When Lord Chaitanya would fall behind the chariot, then Krishna would understand the mind of Radharani. At that time, no, Krishna, no. At that time, when the when when Lord Chaitanya would fall behind Jagannath, at that time, Krishna would think about Radharani. Oh, sorry. Uh, that so sometimes Lord Jagannath would fall behind Lord Chaitanya. So that would show, that shows that Radharani that shows to Radha, that shows to Radharani that Lord Jagannath or Lord Krishna has not forgotten her. And then Lord Jagannath would stop, he wouldn't go forward and he'd wait for Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Jagannath cannot move without the association, without the ecstasy of Radharani. Yeah, he was not satisfied without Radharani. So when Jagannath, Lord Jagannath was watching Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya is in the ecstasy of Radharani, and then Lord Jagannath would come forward. Yeah. Come forward, right? Lord, ja Lord Jagannath. Lord Jagannath would move forward. So this was the competition between Lord Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya. It was like a love affair between Krishna and Radharani. So we had Lord Chaitanya who is Radharani in his ecstasy for Krishna 
who is Jagannath. And Jagannath is in ecstasy for Radharani. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be the, always successful. So he would dance in ecstasy and he'd put his two arms up in the air and then he would recite a nice verse in a loud voice. So Lord Chaitanya, remember, he's in the mood of Radharani, so he's talking like Radharani would talk about Krishna. So he said, that person who stole away my heart during my youth is again my master. He said, these are the same moonlight nights in the month of Chaitra. And the same fragrance of the malati flowers is there. And the same breeze, the sweet breeze is coming from the Kadamba forest. And I am the same lover, I am the same person who he loved. But I am not happy here. I am eager to go back to the bank, to the side of the river, Riva. And under the Vitasi tree, that is my desire, that's where I want to be. So Lord Chaitanya would say this verse again and again, but nobody could understand what he was talking about. So, in the past, all the gopis of Vrindavan were very happy to meet with Krishna. Hmm. They met Krishna at Kurukshetra. They hadn't seen him for a long time. So in the same way, Lord Chaitanya, he saw Lord Jagannath just like the gopis saw Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya spoke to Jagannath. He told Lord Jagannath, he said, You are the same Krishna 
and I am the same Radharani. We are meeting again in the same way. Just like when we met at the beginning, when we were young people, in the beginning of our lives. So although we're both the same, my mind is still attracted to Vrindavan. So I wish that you would bring your lotus feet to Vrindavan. Here in Kurukshetra, there are crowds of people. And there's elephants and horses and the so many chariots making a lot of noise. But in Vrindavan, there are flower gardens, gardens, flower gardens, and the humming of the bees and the chirping of the birds. And here at Kurukshetra, you're dressed like a royal prince. And you've come with so many big warriors. But in Vrindavan, you're just a, like an ordinary cowherd boy. And you come along with your foot. So here in Kurukshetra, I don't get even a drop of the ocean of happiness I got in Vrindavan. So I want you to come back to Vrindavan and have enjoy pastimes with me there. So in that mood, Lord Chaitanya would recite these verses. But ordinary people, they could not understand the meaning. Swarup Damodar, he couldn't understand the meaning, but he didn't tell anybody. But Rupa Goswami, he understood and he told people, he explained it to people. So Lord Chaitanya, when he would dance, he would recite a verse which he enjoyed to recite it. He was, he was speaking a verse which was spoken by the gopis. So the gopis are saying to Krishna that your navel is just like a lotus flower. And your lotus feet are the only shelter for those who have fallen into material existence. 
And your feet are worshipped and meditated upon by great yogis and philosophers. So we would like that your lotus feet also will be awakened in our heart. Although we are only ordinary people, we are just doing household affairs. So the gopis, they never had any interest in karma yoga or dhyana yoga or meditation. They were only interested in bhakti yoga. And they didn't like to just meditate on the lotus feet of Krishna. They would like to take his lotus feet and put them on his on their breast. But they were afraid that their breasts were maybe too hard for Krishna's soft lotus feet. If Krishna's feet would be pricked on the on the on the sand or the dust or the thorns on the ground, if they would prick Krishna's feet. Then the gopis would feel the pain and they, they would feel very sorry. Gopis wanted to keep Krishna at home. This is the Krishna consciousness mood of the gopis of Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya was in this ecstasy of the gopis. So he was saying in the mood, he was speaking in the mood of Radharani. So he said, for most people, the mind and the heart are one. But because my mind is never separated from Vrindavan, I think my mind and Vrindavan are the same. And so since, since you, Krishna, you like Vrindavan, you should place your lotus feet there. And I, I will think that's your greatest mercy. So it's the nature of the mind to accept whatever we things we like and reject what we don't like. But when we fix our mind on Krishna, then our mind becomes as good as Vrindavan. And 
wherever Krishna is, there must be Radharani and the gopis and the cowherd boys and all the people of Vrindavan. So when we fix our mind on Krishna and our mind becomes Vrindavan, then all the other things, our friends of Krishna, they're also there. And we will always live in Vrindavan. We won't we won't want to live anywhere else. So Lord Chaitanya is speaking like Radharani and he's saying, My dear Lord, he said, My home is Vrindavan. And I want to get your association there. But if I don't get it, then it will be very difficult for me to keep to keep my life. So if we want to get the association of Krishna, we have to first give up all the material designations. So the mind has to give up all the material things, but the mind cannot be vacant. There has to be something in the mind. So our, we have to fill our mind with thought of Krishna and feelings of Krishna and a desire to serve Krishna. So so we have we have to give up all the material activities and we should we, we, we should have the desire to always think of krishna there has to be some enjoyment for the mind and we can get that enjoyment with Krishna. Without Krishna, we cannot live. So then Lord Chaitanya says to Krishna, because Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of Radharani, he says, My dear Krishna, in the past, you were staying in Mathura, and you sent Uddhava to teach me. And you wanted him to teach me mystic yoga and speculative knowledge. But my mind doesn't accept it. There's no place in my mind for these things. You know me very well, and you, but still you're trying to teach me all these these things 
It's not right for you to do this. A devotee has no interest in mystic yoga or speculative knowledge. What a devotee should do, a devotee should worship the deity and, and he should engage in the Lord's service. And serve the deity is just like serving Krishna directly. The deity is an incarnation of Krishna. It comes in this material world. So there's no difference between Krishna in the deity form and Krishna in the spiritual world. For, for Krishna, there's no difference between matter and spirit. So when Krishna comes in the elements of the deity, maybe wood or maybe metal, these elements become spiritual. So if we worship the deity, we have direct contact with Krishna. So devotees don't have any interest in meditation or yoga practice or mental speculation. So then Lord Chaitanya says, I would like to take my consciousness from you and engage it in material activities. But even though I try, I cannot do it. I have a natural attraction to you only. So it's just, it's madness for you to think that I'm going to meditate on you. Yeah, don't, don't kill me. You're, you're trying to kill me. It is not good for you to think that I'm a, a your student and take instructions from you. So a devotee cannot do this kind of mystic yoga and mental speculation. He wants Krishna and Krishna's service. So the gopis are not like mystic yogis. Each, uh, 
They will never be satisfied just by meditation. Even they're meditating on your lotus feet or imitating the yogis, it's not going to satisfy them. So to teach the gopis about meditation, this is just duplicity. You're telling them to do mystic yoga practice, they're not satisfied. They, be, they, they become angry with you. When, when somebody is a pure devotee and then they, they become The, the, when somebody is a pure devotee, the thought of becoming one with Krishna is hellish to them. And trying trying to con the mystic yoga practice to control the senses, this is also foolish for pure devotees. Because devotees' mind and senses are all engaged in the service of Krishna. So the mind and senses, that there's no possibility that they will think about doing anything material. And the same way a devotee is not interested to go to the heavenly planets, because the heavenly planets are also material. Yes, it's, a very, it's a temporary thing. The devotee wants devotional service eternally. So in Vrindavan, the gopis and the cowherd boys and even the cows and the trees and the water, everything is fully conscious of Krishna. So they're never satisfied with anything except Krishna. So the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the, the gopis have fallen into the ocean of separation and they're being swallowed by the big Timingala fish. The gopis should be saved from, the, the, from this fish because they are your devotees, they are your pure devotees. So why should they even think about liberation? Don't, the gopis, they don't want liberation like the yogis and the jnanis. Yeah. 
The gopis are already liberated from the ocean of material existence. So in bodily life, I mean, if we think we're the body, we want to enjoy the material world. So, this, that is not real life. Real life is to be the servant of Krishna. So we can never be happy by advancing materially. Uncon if our senses are uncontrolled, we will simply go to hellish life. So the conditioned souls, they see the, the duration of life is just for sense gratification, just for eating and sleeping and mating and defending. So in the animal species, they do the same thing. So this is just a waste of the human form of life. So we should endeavor for the service of Krishna and then we can get real liberation. So Lord Chaitanya said, it's amazing that you have forgotten the land of Vrindavan because he's Radharani speaking to Krishna so he's saying, it's amazing, you have forgotten the land of Vrindavan. And how is it you've forgotten your father and your mother and your friends? And how have you forgotten the Govardhan Hill and the Yamuna River and the forests where you enjoyed Rasa dance? Oh, Krishna, you are certainly a gentleman with all good qualities. Krishna, yeah. You're well behaved and soft hearted and merciful. I know there's no fault to be found in you. But your mind doesn't remember the people of Vrindavan. This is misfortune. I don't care for my personal happiness. But when I see the face of Mother Yasoda, and how sad she is. And when I see the hearts of all the people of Vrindavan, how their hearts are breaking because of you, then I wonder, I wonder whether you want to kill all of us. So 
把我们都杀死呢？ Or do you want to enliven us by coming here? 还是你希望，您希望不来来到这里，让我们重新焕发生机呢 ？Why are you keeping us alive in this kind of suffering? 您为什么让我们在这种这般痛苦的状态下还依然？ The people of Vrindavan, they don't want to see you dressed like a prince. Vrindavan 的居民们可不希望看见您的穿着像一位王子。And we don't want to see you in the, a company of the great warriors from foreign places. 我们也不希望看见您。身边带着那些外国的、来自地狱的那些伟大的战将们。The people of Vrindavan cannot leave Vrindavan. Vrindavan 的人们，他们离不开 Vrindavan 这片土壤。And without you being here in Vrindavan, without your presence, we are they're all dying. 但是你不在，他们都在慢慢的死去。Dear Krishna, you are the life and soul of Vrindavan. The 亲爱的 Krishna， 你是 Vrindavan 的生命与灵魂。And you are a spe. You are the life of Nanda Maharaj. 您可是南大大军的命根子。You are the only opulence in the land of Vrindavan. 您是文达文这片大地上唯一的富裕。You are very merciful. 您非常仁慈。Please come and let all the people of Vrindavan live. 来吧，快来吧，让所有文达文的居民们一起活下去吧。Keep your lotus feet in Vrindavan. 请将您的莲花足。So we should understand, Shrimati Radharani is not talking about her own unhappiness. We should understand, Shrimati Radharani is not talking about her own unhappiness. She wants to bring out Krishna's feelings for the condition of all the people in Vrindavan. Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, the cowherd boys, the gopis, and the birds and the bees. Mama Yashoda, Nanda 大军，牧牛童们，牧牛姑娘们，那里的鸟儿和蜜蜂。Everything associated with Krishna in Vrindavan. So this, these feelings of Radharani were manifest. This was the this was the mood of Lord Chaitanya. So Radharani 的这份情感都是是 Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 的心态 So he was inviting Lord Jagannath, who is Krishna, to come to Vrindavan. This is the purport of the Rati Atra. This is why we bring the chariot from Jagannath Puri to the Gundija Temple. So after hearing Radharani's words, Lord Krishna, he has to reply. He, Lord Krishna, had been hearing about how the Vrijbasi people love him so much, so he thought. 
he thought about he thought himself to be very great he has so much to repay the people of Vrindavan because they gave him so much love so he has to repay his debt to them and he has to pacify the mind of Radharani. And so Lord Krishna says to Radharani, he said, Radharani, please, please hear me. He, he, he said, I cry day and night simply remembering all you people of Vrindavan. Nobody knows how unhappy this makes me. Actually, Krishna never goes away from Vrindavan. He's always in Vrindavan. But in order to, to take care of some duties, Krishna had to go to Mathura, he had to kill Kamsa. And then his father took him to Dwarka, where he was busy with the affairs of the, the state there, because different demons would come sometimes and attack, so Krishna would be busy. And so Krishna was away from Vrindavan, he was not happy, and he tells Radharani that. She is the life and soul of Lord Krishna. So Krishna says, all the people of Vrindavan, my father, my mother, the cowherd boys and everything, they're like my life and soul. And among all these people, the gopis are the most dear to me. And among all the gopis, you, Srimati Radharani, are the, the chief. You are the the very life of my life. So Radharani is the center of all of Vrindavan activities. And people in Vrindavan they always chant the name of Radharani. They will say Jai Radhe. So Radharani is actually she's the queen of Vrindavan, and Krishna is just her decoration. Krishna is Madame Mohan, he attracts Cupid. But Radharani, she attracts Krishna. So she is Madan Mohan Mohini. So Krishna tells Radharani, 
I am always controlled by your loving affairs. And being separate from you and living far away from you have only it's only due to my that's only just my misfortune. When a woman is separated from the man she loves, or the man is separated from the woman he loves, then neither of them can live. They live only for each other. And if one dies and the other hears of it, then the other person will die also. So a loving chaste wife and a loving husband, they always think of each other. They don't think of their own happiness, they think of the other person's happiness. So when the couple is like that, then certainly they'll meet again without, uh, without too much time. So Krishna says to Radharani, you're very dear to me and I know that in my absence you cannot live without me. Krishna Radharani so to keep you living, I worship Lord Narayan. And by the mercy of, by the power of Lord Narayan, I come to Vrindavan every day to enjoy pastimes with you. And then I return to Dwarka. So you can always feel my presence in Vrindavan. So our loving affair is very powerful because of Lord Narayan's blessings. This allows me to be unseen by others. But I hope very soon I'll be visible to everyone. So Krishna has two potencies, one is which is manifest and the other is unmanifest. So they're the same for a for us uh, for an advanced devotee. Even if a if Krishna is not present. The devotee, because he's so absorbed in thinking of Krishna, he can feel Krishna's presence. Krishna 
Yeah, when Krishna is not visible to the people of Vrindavan, but they're always thinking of him. So although Krishna was living in Dwarka, he was also present in Vrindavan. But that was in his unmanifest form. But those devotees, they will soon, soon see Krishna. They will soon go back home, back to Godhead. And then they will see Krishna directly. So the pure devotee is always speaking of Krishna and trying to serve Krishna. And when he gives up his body, he goes back to Krishna. So Krishna said, he's telling Radharani, I have already killed all the demons who were enemies of the Yadus. And I have killed Kamsa and his supporters. But there's still two or four more demons living. I want to kill them. And after I do that, then I'm coming back to Vrindavan. So the devotee of Krishna never likes to leave Vrindavan. But sometimes for the business of Krishna, he has to go. But after he does his business, does his preaching work, then he comes back to Vrindavan. So Krishna is telling Radharani like that. Krishna said, I want to protect the people of Vrindavan from the attacks of my enemies. Krishna said, that's why I stay in my kingdom, in Dwarka. I'm not attached to being the king there. And whatever wives and children and wealth I have, it's only for the satisfaction of the Yadus. But your loving qualities always attract me to Vrindavan. So I'm sure within 10 or 20 days I shall return and I'll be there in Vrindavan. And we will enjoy day and night. I will enjoy with you and all the dead damsels of Vrindavan. So Krishna was speaking this way, he became very anxious to go to Vrindavan. Krishna 
and he had a special verse, a special song which he had Radharani listen to so that she could understand that Krishna was coming back to her. Krishna told Radharani that devotional service unto me is the only way you can come to me. And Krishna says, my dear gopis, whatever love and devotion you have for me, this is the only reason for my coming back to you. So Lord Chaitanya would sit in his room with Swarup Damodar and day and night they would discuss these different talks between Krishna and Radharani and the gopis. Okay, so maybe we have to... Is there any questions there? No questions, yeah? Oh, here, oh, here. There are, there are some questions now. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll take the questions, yeah. Okay. Now, the Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble, humble obeisance. O glory to Srila Prabhupada. If a devotee is more attracted to Aishvaya, and Krishna in Dwarka, but not in Vrindavan. Is that normal? And can that move change? The government is like this, you know, I'm sure. I do have Krishna, Guru Maharaj, give a brief back. We are very sure of that part. We are very sure of that part. And one of the foundations of the Jiyabai, Dwarka's father and Dwarka's Krishna so seen, but not the Vrindavan Krishna so seen. Yes, it can be changed. It can change in time. Some people, however, they worship Krishna in that mood, in the mood of Dwarka. The worship of Krishna in Vrindavan is very confidential. But Lord Chaitanya and all of his devotees, they were very attached to the worship of Krishna in Vrindavan. You don't have to go to Vrindavan. There were many great devotees of Lord Chaitanya. They never went to Vrindavan. But anyway, you're still a very new devotee. You're not even initiated yet, so you don't have to worry too much about this yet. Just try to become attached to Krishna, whether Krishna is in Vrindavan or Dwarka. They just want to hear about Krishna. Yes. Hare 
Krishna 顶拜咕噜和所有的奉献者。刚刚不是讲到 Krishna 控制所有感官，而那同种通过控制感官的瑜伽修习是愚蠢的。在佛家梵歌中说，体式瑜伽是为愚蠢的愚蠢的人准备的。以上更多的体式瑜伽的修习，是是否可以帮助人们进入 Krishna 世界中呢？ Questions from Trinity. Hare Krishna, obeisance to Guru and all devotees of from Beijing Center. Hare Krishna, obeisance to Guru and all devotees. Just now, Guru mentioned that Krishna controls all senses, and that you you can practice that try to control senses. It is very foolish. In Bhagavad Gita, it said that the Asana Yoga, Asana Yoga, Asana Yoga is for those foolish people. Um, and the time, the more more Asana Yoga practice, whether they can, can they can help people to enter into Krishna consciousness? Yes, they can. Can. 他们可以帮助。Because if they do Ashtanga Yoga, if they do it properly, then they follow the rules and regulations. You know, in the beginning of Ashtanga Yoga, there is Yam and Niyam, so that is like the regulated principles. So that's good. That makes them pious and it makes them qualified to get the mercy of a devotee. 体式瑜伽，啊，三个瑜伽当中呢，也有规则。一开始就强调了压嘛你压嘛，规范你原则。那这个是很好的，它可以帮助人积累虔诚，使得他们有资格获得一位奉献者的仁慈。Without the mercy of a devotee, they won't come into devotional service. 没有。But Ashtanga Yoga is a good. It, it helps them to get control over the mind and senses, and that's in the beginning. That's helpful. Uh, But we were speaking about the gopis of Vrindavan, and the gopis of Vrindavan, they're on the highest platform of bhakti yoga, that they're totally absorbed in Krishna. For, so for them to control the mind and senses is not necessary. They are already very, very advanced. They naturally control their mind and senses. They use their mind and senses only for Krishna's service. So to tell them to control their senses, it, it, it's foolish. Because they're so, they're very, very advanced devotees. Just like Prabhupada. You know, if you were going to meet Prabhupada and you said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, don't take tea or coffee, <laughs> you know, Prabhupada, don't eat meat. Of course Prabhupada's not going to eat meat, you know, he never ate it. Just... Okay. There's one. There's there's more question. All right. 
下一个是 Harini。从沙滩尼亚跳舞时唱诵着木牛姑娘的祷文，我们在神像前跳舞也能唱诵祷文吗？应该唱诵什么祷文呢 ？When when Lord Chaitanya dances, he sing the prayer of those gopis, and we also sing the three prayers when we. Are dancing in front of the deities. So what kind of prayer should we chant? We should chant the Hare Krishna mantra. We cannot be like Lord Chaitanya. We're not so advanced as Lord Chaitanya. We but Prabhupada told us to chant Hare Krishna mantra. And we have also the Gora Arti in the evening. We sing Gora Arti song. So we have nice songs to sing. We have the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Sing these songs. Yeah. Mm. Well, Lord Jagannath is the Lord of the universe. It's a form of Krishna. It's a very special form. Lord Chaitanya used to live in Jagannath Puri, where Lord Jagannath is worshipped, and every day he would go to see Lord Jagannath in the temple. So Srila Prabhupada, when he was a young man, and from his childhood, he had been devoted to Jagannath. And so when he went to America, then they also started to worship Jagannath, and Prabhupada told them they could do Ratiatra festival. So Lord Jagannath is very nice form for devotees to worship. It's the form of the Lord in wood. The deity of Lord Jagannath is made from wood. So the wood is spiritual because it's in the form of Lord Jagannath. Because it's the form of Lord Jagannath, it's not ordinary wood anymore, it becomes spiritual. So Lord Jagannath represents Krishna, Lord Balaram represents the Guru, and Subhadra Maharani represents Yogamaya. Uh, 
。而索巴的玛哈拉里代表了 yoga yoga maya。Yeah. Okay. Next question. Next question. Next question is from Harini. Oh, Guruji, please repeat the question. The question is, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it possible to marry a wife? Yes, yes. Harini, is it Um, the next next question is from Wang Wang Suying. Can you explain why you want to do Sui Fu Fu? Can you explain why we should follow the Kathmandu Master Sui Fu Fu? Can you explain why we should follow the Kathmandu Master as the austerity of Kathmandu Master? Yes, we should follow the austerity of Kathmandu Master because austerity is necessary for everyone. Who wants to go back to Godhead? We have to purify our mind and senses, and the way to purify mind and senses is by accepting some austerity. So we have a minimum austerity, Chaturmasya. We don't do a very great austerity, but a little austerity is good for us. Just like this month, we're fasting from milk. So we have a minimum and then next month, the month of Kartik, we should not take any uh, high protein food. Things like soya. These things we don't take in the month of Kartik. Okay, and during the month, during the Chaturmasya, when we're doing austerity, we should do more hearing and chanting. Okay, Shai Gawanti. Well, that is a spiritual designation. But we're trying to become devotees. We're not devotees yet. We're still trying to become devotees. And the more we the more we advance, the more we will understand I'm not really a devotee, I'm still a long way from becoming a devotee. Mm-hmm. 
不能给予现实的力量戒酒，但这是不是很能冒犯呢？嗯。So this mother is said that the there is a taboo who want to take shelter from you, but the, um, there is a question, there is a problem. The problem is that whether this Prabhu has to follow all four regulated principles before he can take shelter of you. For example, uh, because uh, she had, uh, he had uh, his job and he has to drink wine uh, in, the, in some cases. Some devotees suggest that uh, after taking shelter of the guru, the guru can give the instruction and the power that he can get rid of the he can he will no longer no longer drink wine. Um, so is it there, is it an offense? Well, we don't give shelter until people follow the four principles. So first you follow the four principles and then you can take shelter. Now, Srila Prabhupada, he met one man. And one man told him, he said, you know, I like Krishna, but I also like wine. So Prabhupada told him, he said, though, so when you drink the wine, you should think this wine is the, is the taste of Krishna. And if you think of Krishna more, then gradually you will stop drinking wine. So sometimes these jobs, sometimes you have these problems, you, you have to come up with some good reason why you cannot drink wine. You have to say that I am having some health problem that the doctor told me I have to be very careful not to drink wine. It's not good for my intestines. Mm -hmm. Yes, you just have to be a little intelligent and think carefully how to get away from this bad habits. If you have a serious desire to come to Krishna consciousness, then you won't let a little thing like wine stop you. You'll get rid of that wine. So this is my instructions to, to you. Okay, any more questions? Yes. Um, we think that uh, we are 
we we are already devotees and whatever happens that uh, we will we are better than non devotees no matter uh, whether we do good or bad uh, good, uh, even we we are not so excellent we are better than non devotees so is this a spiritual understanding or an ignorance uh, out of the bodily concept of life? Well, we want to have, we want to be careful, we want to think that actually I'm a fallen soul. Don't think. Don't think we're better than others, but we should think we're ve somehow we are very fortunate to have the mercy of Krishna's Krishna's devotees. And remember, before we became devotees, we were not any different from all the other people. So we should see Krishna in everyone's heart. And somehow we've been fortunate, we got mercy of the pure devotees. Okay. the highest worship is worship Lord Vishnu, but the, high, the higher than worship, worship of Lord Vishnu is worship is his devotee. Uh, if we concentrate our mind on your devotee of Lord Krishna and follow his instruction and teaching. So it, it is also uh, useful even the desire of each one. So huh? this, uh, so what's the difference between this absorb, this concentration, and and concentrate our mind on Krishna? What's the difference of the result? No difference. No if you concentrate on the devotees in relation to Krishna, they will also bring you to Krishna. But we should understand the devotees of Krishna are more merciful than Krishna. It's very difficult to go to Krishna directly. We cannot go to Krishna directly. We have to go through his devotees. Okay. 
I'll listen to you. Okay, that's all the question. Oh, very good. Uh, so, thank you so much, Guru Mani, for your wonderful translation. Thank all the devotees. Oh, here is a first thing. Here, here, talk about a question. Uh, Guru Mani. How should we, uh, how can we understand the symptom uh, of the ecstatic symptom of Lord Caitanya? Mm. So in the case that we we are we don't understand, how can we cultivate? Well, we have to hear. We have to hear about the pastimes of Lord Caitanya. We have to hear the descriptions as they are given also in the nectar of devotion. If you read the nectar of devotion, many, many examples are given how different uh, situations, different qualities of Krishna, they cause ecstasy in the devotees. So, gradually, as we go on, we practice devotional service, we will also one day, maybe not in this lifetime, maybe in the future life, maybe, we don't know, but that's the idea, the goal. We come to that stage, we come to the where we feel ecstasy in taking part in pastimes with Krishna. So, devotional service and ecstasy is one of the levels. There's three levels of devotional service. There's sadhana bhakti, which is devotional service and practice. And then there's bhava bhakti, devotional service and ecstasy. And then above bhava bhakti is prema bhakti, devotional service and love of God. So we want to we want to come to the higher levels of devotional service one day. And we want to be able to recognize it if we see it in others. We should know what is genuine devotion. Sometimes we would see Srila Prabhupada in ecstasy. Okay. She said, she said, she asked that how to cultivate the taste of hearing. Uh, how to, in the city, yes. How to what? How to cultivate the taste, the rasa. The taste of hearing, listening, uh, under the circumstances that we are, we can, we we still cannot understand. Well, we have to, we have to be patient, and determined, and enthusiastic. You have to have these kind of qualities, and this will help you to, to hear. 
耐心、决心、热情这些品质，可以帮助聆听。It will take time, but you just have to you have to be eager for that. You should want to understand more about the ecstasies which are there in devotional service. So we want to hear about the wonderful devotees in Krishna consciousness and how they experienced ecstasy. It's very good for us. It helps us to develop stronger faith in Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll thank thank you very much, Guru Mani. Thank all the devotees for their questions and for listening. And we'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada ki. Recording stopped.